Critics. I am Antoine. So I uh, went to see a movie this weekend. I'm trying to uh, keep on doing my movie reviews. Um, so I saw a Girl in the Spider's Web. I saw the Girl in Spider Web this weekend. Now this movie uh, is starring Claire Claire Foy. Is that how you say her name? And I I don't don't ask me to nobody else in this movie. <laughs> oh, also in Lakeith Stanfield. He's in this movie too. So this movie is this movie is a, a is a continuation of a ongoing series of movies. Um, now a lot of people have if people have seen Girl with the Dragon Tattoo or heard of it. This is coming. Uh, this is in that um, that's in that uh, um, series. Uh, I guess this is the one of the later books. So this was originally a series of books, and it was adopted into movies. It was a uh, Swedish, uh, I guess I believe they Swedish books, and these were some um, movies, the Swedish movies, which was called "Girl with the Dragon Tattoo," "Girls Who Kick the Girl Kick the Hornet's Nest," and "Girl Play with Fire." I don't think it was in that order. I think it was "Girl Play with Fire" was the second one, and then "Girl Who Kicks the Hornet's Hornet's Nest" was the third one. And this is the girl in the spider's web. So, uh, I really enjoyed the Swedish versions of these. Um, I'm a big fan of the actress who played uh, Elizabeth Salander in in the Swedish version. That was uh, Naomi Repace. She was actually in uh, Prometheus, um, and in some, and then she did a lot of other Swedish movies. But I really, I really like her, and. Um, the American version, uh, Rooney, Rooney, Rooney Mara, she looks gross. <laughs> I did not like that version at all. I ain't gonna say I didn't like the version, but she's look, ugh, she looked real gross. So, okay, um, so we, they did, they was gonna uh, attempt to do the trilogy in American, but the girl, the, the American version of Girl in Tattoo did not go well. It didn't sell. It didn't really do uh, big numbers, so they just cut it off. So instead of doing the the sequel, direct sequel to that, they just waited, and then they did like a later book. And this is the girl with the in the spider's web. And looking at the numbers of how much it sold, they probably not gonna continue <laughs> doing it. So okay, girl in the spider's web. And all right, so like I said, this movie pick up. Like uh, way after the girl, the dragon tattoo. If you if you follow that story, Elizabeth Elizabeth Salander uh, was working with this reporter. I forget his name to solve a crime because that's kind of like what she did. She was like a detective. She was like a hacker detective superhero. <laughs> and basically, she take jobs from people that needed stuff to be hacked. Uh, some was illegal things and some was legal so like if you need some kind of computer work done um, you know that's that's what she did and she you know was a real she was physically capable like I don't know if she was like in the martial arts but she was physically capable of handling herself because she used to get in tough situations where like big big people big men and she can pretty much handle herself um, so that was kind of like the setup for her and and it's kind of a cool setup too because in a way she is kind of like a superhero, but she not. So, so I think they was kind of like doing like a, like she's a a fantasy character. Like this is what people fantasize about uh, being a, a you know a, a, a slick detective that's very you know open about their sexuality and and all that. Because and you know she's very openly a bisexual in the series. You know she's got girlfriends and boyfriends. You know she's very you know. Um, sexually liberated individual so she kind of like a fantasy character to me like you know whoever wrote the book was like you know it's kind of like one of them characters that can do everything um where it, you know what makes them make them kind of unreal because they could do so much you know what i'm saying they even went so far as to gave her like a she got like a disguise kind of you know she got like the little she put the little makeup on before she do her little thing like she'll go um like you know, she she's kind of like Batman because she's like so well prepared with gadgets. She got gadgets and she got um, 
like she can she can hack anything, right? And then she got all these little gadgets, and what she'll do is she'll ambush somebody, and and you know use all her gadgets, and you know, and then she'll you know do her, and then she got on this little makeup mask thing she wear where she'll kind of scare the person. It's like, you know, it's all right, but it's a bit much. But okay, that's how the movie pick up. From there on, the movie pretty much turned into a action spy thriller kind of caper. Because, I mean, you know, she get a job to do a hack. And it turns out to be some top secret government stuff. And it's and it's like a big it's like a big deal. So she, she it's going to be it's one of the movies where uh, the, your main character, they get a job and they job. They they bit off more they can chew, and now they now they're on the run. Now I've seen this this I've seen this happen quite a bit, um, where they got to clear their name and they got involved in something they was they didn't know it was gonna be this big and they got too involved. It was kind of one of them deals, and it pretty much played out real cliche from that point on, which they was the setup was cliche, but it pretty much played out like a cliche uh, spy thriller action movie um they they kind of superheroed up her role a little bit to me because i'm looking like they got her doing things that okay she was able to do but everything kept happening just way too convenient way too convenient and it was it was making me say oh come on man you know like things just happening like just just for convenience um, and you know, and I don't want to, and I don't want to spoil a lot of it, but it's it's a scene in the movie that really made me say, get the hell out of here with that. I know she was a hacker, but they made her they made her hacking skills like a superpower because <laughs> it's like she could hack anything whenever it was convenient for her. She had a hack for it, you know. Oh, um, I need I need to control somebody's car. Let me hack their car. I need, you know what I'm saying? It, it just got to a point where it was like, okay, it's it's getting a little, it's like almost a cheat. It's like a cheat code because you can do everything now. <laughs> so oh, it's a hack for that. Let me let me hack that. And like she always had some kind of something. She 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 had some kind of always had a little device on her that can hack anything. I'm looking like I don't think it worked just like that. <clears throat> so I don't know stuff like that was just way too it was way too convenient it was too many convenient moments okay so we she has a sister now that's set up in the trailer i'm pretty sure they said that up in the trailer and we all it's like the trailer kind of gave you this idea of um she's this cool uh smart person and then somebody else is just as cool and smart as her but she's the evil version. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my God, that now that's cliche. And she shows up, and I'm looking like, are you kidding me? Because they have her basically a super villain. You know, she had on, you know, she's wearing red head to toe. She's wearing bright red head to toe for no real reason. I mean, they she wasn't out on the town or something. It was just like what she wore every day, like bright red, red head to toe. And, <laughs> and and she she pop up like she might as well be wearing a cape I mean because they gave you every super villain cliche possible for this character you know um, we were sisters and we both uh, we both um, super smart <clears throat> and I'm evil because <clears throat> excuse me I'm evil because I'm I got done wrong when we was a child, and you and you and you was the good kid or something, you know, one of them, one of them deals, and you know how this, you know where this is already going, the stuff that she had got involved with and had to steal whatever had to do with her. I mean, I'm not really spoiling nothing because kind of the preview, the trailer kind of gave you all that, and I mean, you know, from their own, it's just you know a bunch of action moments. I mean, some of the some of the action moments were were decent um, with some decent little scenes uh, but I'm gonna tell you like this um, that a lot of the stuff they was doing uh, with the hacking and the computer stuff just did not feel real didn't feel real 
because it's looking like they had like some uh, uh some 3D imaging of of some some people in the house and it's like how do they get in these angles? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's almost like oh, is the satellite in the house or oh, let me guess they hacked the cameras. But then it was 3D imaging though. It was weird. If I didn't I didn't quite get it. It seemed like they was they 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 got a little too um I think they went a little too um, unrealistic with that um, to make it cooler. And, you know, um, Lakeith Stanfield character was a cliche character. I really liked that actor. They didn't give him that much to work with. They gave him the same kind of the same kind of roles for uh, his character. Like, like, OK, he was a government agent that was chasing down the stolen stuff that she stole. Now this is very cliche too. You need to have an ally to come in to uh, help you out, and and he, you know, he's he's chasing it down. So oh, we on the same side. Let's work together. You knew that was coming. Um, no, as I said, a lot of cliche stuff in there, and it was like a, a by the book cliche action movie. That was, and and talk about the end, a very very anticlimactic ending on some on on some dumb coincidence shit that made me say okay just please get over just please get over <laughs> uh, and then and my, my prayers were answered because it was just over like that <laughs> it wasn't like I it was no good closure and then it was some bullshit and the movie really kind of pissed me off because uh, I like I said I was a fan of all the original Swedish movies and I was hoping given uh, the American treatment of a bigger budget, uh, bigger budget, they could possibly do you know do it better or or get some more adoptions of some of those books. But given this movie, I say no, don't do it because it was just like I said, they, Hollywood will tear it up, man. They just gonna give it the, the standard action formula, and it wasn't that good. So um, I'm going to give my rating. My rating for this movie is a uh, this movie was a whack. I give it a whack. I'm not gonna give it a, a, a high garbage because it wasn't it wasn't the worst thing I ever seen, but it was not good by any stretch of the any stretch of the imagination. And um, you know, I did not. I mean, I enjoyed some of the some of the stuff in there, but uh, for the most part, I was rolling my eyes a lot and and I was getting uncomfortable in my seat. And that's what happens when the movie is bad. I get uncomfortable in my seat <laughs> every time I watch a movie that's just crappy I'd be like oh man this church is uncomfortable I, I don't know what, what it is but when I get uncomfortable I already know this movie bad cause when a movie good I don't pay attention to how uncomfortable the seat is you know <laughs> in the movies so um, that is my review for a girl in the spider's web it is not that good uh, I would wait till it get to Redbox or wait till it get to Redbox or uh, Netflix or something it's worth you know a one time watch especially if you're a fan of the original just want to um, just want to see that character again it's okay but it's not it's not a great movie um, but it's not the worst thing I've ever seen so uh, my rating is a whack alright uh, I'm gonna move on to uh, my next movie I did see two movies 